So if you're clicking to this video, it is because you want to learn math and science in an easier and a more effective way than you currently do. You might be concerned with your current performance in science and math related subjects, or in the other hand, you might just want to improve your performance even more. To not only make learning an adventure rather than hard labor and to achieve better grades in these subjects, but to also be more engaged and enjoy the process of learning even more. So if you have little hopes on yourself, stay calm because the author of the following book passed from a failing math in high school to actually getting a PhD in systems engineering. Hi, my name is Mario and I am a 16 year old A level student from Spain. In this video, I'm gonna break down nine key takeaways I've got out of this book, a mind for numbers, how to excel at math and science, even if you flunked algebra. Although this book focuses on math and science, the advice is applicable to any aspect of life, uh, including any other academic subject or also things like chess. I consider it a very complete guide to actually learn the way to learn more effectively and with less frustration. It includes lots of insights from world leading professors of mathematics, physics, biology, neuroscience and way more telling us their own experience and giving us their advice on how to learn math and science. So let's get started by talking about the two modes of thinking, focused and diffuse. A common mistake is to think that we want to be 100% of the time focused, 100% uh, using our focused thinking. Why would you want to be in the diffuse mode where you are distracted and not focused? That doesn't really help or does it? Well, it actually does help a lot. As Barbara Oakley, the author of this book says, to learn about and be creative in math and science, we need to strengthen and use both the focused and diffuse modes. She also says that as long as we are focusing intently uh, too hard on a problem, we are blocking our diffuse mode. And the diffuse mode is actually the mode of thinking that allows us to see things in a bigger picture and uh, when we approach difficult problems, when being innovative, it really helps a lot because it helps you go out of um, a place where you are trying to search for the answer on your brain. It kind of does a zoom out and you can easily access other parts of the brain to actually find the answer to your problem. While you're doing, I don't know, sport or while you're walking, the diffuse mode is actually working. So if you are able to uh, set yourself some time to focus on a problem, and you aren't able to get the solution, the best is to go for a walk, maybe sleep, get some sleep. Uh, it is proven to be the most effective way of achieving diffuse thinking. And this will give you um, some kind of advantage when approaching uh, the problem once again, because your mind, even though you don't know it, is actually working in the background, working on whatever you were thinking. So the next day, if you get good sleep, if you get to do some exercise, uh, a walk, you will be able to see the problem way better and you will be actually able to get the answer more easily. Secondly, let's talk about the Einstellung effect. I think I pronounced it more or less right, Einstellung. It is basically when an idea you have on how to solve a problem is basically flawed. So uh, due to being flawed, you are unable to get out of that uh, pattern of thinking and search for another type of answer. So you're basically stuck on solving a problem uh, due to being fixated around an idea which is uh, wrong. So that's the reason why we need a mix of them in order to uh, learn effectively math and science. So let's go into the third takeaway, which is embrace being confused and wrong. As in chess, in the end, the best uh, students are those who are able to identify their weaknesses and that work harder on them. When students approach a problem and don't know how to do it, they'll often decide they are not good at the subject. Grades are indicators of time management and a rate of success. The best learners are the ones who cope best with failure and use it as a learning tool. So basically, as you see, uh, it is very important to accept that you are confused and wrong. Because if you ignore your confusion, uh, whether it be for your ego or yes, because I don't know, you just don't know how to approach it, you will let it pass by. This leads me to the fourth takeaway, which is on procrastination. 
So as we talked about before on uh, focus and diffuse modes of learning, when procrastinating, the problem is that you aren't uh, leaving yourself enough time in order to uh, do the different cycles of focused and diffuse uh, modes of thinking. So the consequence of procrastination is the fact that you can only do a very superficial focus mode learning. The dread of doing a task uses up more time and energy than doing the task itself. You put off studying math and it becomes even more painful to think about studying it. So as you see, the problem in procrastination is not that you leave things to the end, which is also a huge problem, but leaving things to the end itself is not the problem. The problem is that you aren't giving yourself enough time to do focused and diffused modes of learning. And as I told you, uh, you actually feel mental pain when procrastinating. So if you are able to not procrastinate, you will feel way, way better. When you actually get to the thing, you're actually not feeling any pain. Maybe you are confused. Maybe you think uh, this is quite difficult, but you aren't going to feel the pain and the guilt of, oh, I have to do this sometime because the deadline is coming. So that's why procrastination is very key because you want to get enough cycles of uh, focused and diffused learning in order to consolidate the concepts and understand everything for your final exam. So for point number five, let's talk about active retrieval and illusions of competence. As students often erroneously believe that they are learning by simply rereading material that is on the page in front of them. They have an illusion of competence because the solution is already there. So if you have watched uh, any of my past videos or any of the other videos on study techniques on YouTube, you may already know that active recall or active retrieval is the most effective study technique. Uh, retrieving the material, testing yourself um, is actually way, way more effective than just rereading. The more effort you put into recalling the material, the best chances you have that the information is gonna stay on your memory. You can't learn mathematics or science without a healthy dose of practice and repetition to help you build the chunks that will underpin your expertise. As like in chess, uh, grandmasters devote far more time than lesser ranked players to figuring out what their weaknesses are and working to strengthen those. It is not as easy as just sitting around and playing chess for fun, but in the end the results can be way more gratifying. So this is basically the same as with chess. The best students are the ones that are, uh, put time into improving, into finding uh, their weaknesses and the less uh, better students, the less ranked players of chess, are those that just do it, uh, they don't think that much about it, they don't even put the work to identify their own weaknesses, and less even to improve them. So let's go into the sixth takeaway of this video, which is context-dependent retrieval. So in 1975, a study was conducted uh, to test the idea that when you learn, when you uh, test yourself on something when you use active recall you basically are gaining uh, knowledge at a deeper level related to your environment so if i learn for example something in this room if i go uh, half a walk i may not be able to remember some things because our brain relates some information to some location they tested this idea by uh, trying to have some scuba divers learn uh, some information on land and others on water, on the sea. And when they tested uh, the divers uh, on how good their memory was, they got to the conclusion that uh, they retained uh, better information if they recalled it in a place they had initially uh, learned it. So as you can see in this graph that I'm currently showing you, you can see that those scuba divers that learned the content on land when being tested, uh, they did better on land. And those that learned uh, the words underwater uh, were able to recall more when being underwater once again. So as you can see, this is very good evidence to know that we depend on the environment where we learn, where we uh, recall our uh, knowledge. So what this means is that we want to try to have a, an environment that is very, very similar to the one that we're going to have in the exam. So that we are able to retain the highest amount of information possible. So let's get into seven, uh, seventh takeaway, which is how long should we study? Rather than devote a long session to the study or practice of the same skill or concept so that overlearning occurs, students should divide their effort across several shorter sessions. This doesn't mean that long study sessions are necessarily a bad idea. Long sessions are fine as long as students don't devote too much time to any one skill or concept. 
once they understand x they should move on to something else and return to x on another day so let's get into the eighth takeaway which is that writing by hand is way more effective than typing writing by hand helps get the ideas into mind more easily than if you type the answer there is lots of evidence on how there's way more neural activity when uh, writing uh, physically rather than typing and uh, yeah so this is a very um, short takeaway but i think it's very, very important if we are able to um, go and uh, write our notes uh, in a way that's handwritten it is way better than typing i personally use notion but i initially use my several notebooks that i have for each of my classes so if you're able to initially take notes through a uh, hand that's going to improve your retention and understanding significantly and the ninth takeaway that i've got out of this book is to focus on the process not on the product process means the flow of time and the habits and actions associated with it you want to create habits and uh, processes that help you in order to reach your goal, your product. But you don't want to uh, focus on your product by itself because only thinking on the product will create a feeling of uh, friction and will also cause you some mental pain as we already saw before uh, due to procrastination. So yeah, focus on uh, building habits that are gonna get you there. For example, so let's say that I'm gonna write a book uh, the thing I will have to focus on would not be promoting the book and already selling the book, but would be making the daily habits, the processes in order to actually get to the book, to actually write the words needed to end a book. I think you can more or less get the idea. Uh, it's important to build habits and those habits really are the definition of your product. So when making the script of this video, I realized that I left lots of things out. And when I say lots, I say like lots. This book is huge. It has lots of takeaways that I really, really appreciate and find original and very useful. However, if you want me to uh, make another video telling you the uh, rest of uh, takeaways I've got out from this book, which is right now my uh, top book uh, when approaching academics, as well as life, basically, anything. So um, yeah, if you want me to uh, break down the rest of takeaways, just let me know in the comments down below. As always, leave a like if you found this video helpful, useful or entertaining. And uh, yeah, and also consider subscribing. And here you have another video on uh, my book series, which is on how to become a straight A student by Colin Newport, uh, which I think is pretty cool. You could check that out. And you have also a random video YouTube wants you to see from my channel. So you might also want to check it out. And uh, yeah, also consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.